Hello, welcome to Chapter 8 of the UVM Primer. I'm Ray Salemi, the author of the UVM Primer. We're continuing to look at the source code that made up the examples in the book. Um, in this chapter, we're talking about, about parameterized classes. And we start by something with something that we're familiar with, which is creating a module in Verilog that's parameterized. In this case, we have a generic RAM that has an address width and a data width as parameters. Uh, for the RAM, and we can uh, and we declare the width of the address bus and the width of the data bus uh, in terms of these parameters. This is a very common thing to do in uh, in RTL design. And what you do then is you instantiate the RAM, and when you instantiate it, you provide a width and uh, and an address width and a data width. And that way, you can have one piece of code that works for a variety of different widths. To our RAM model, you'll notice too that these don't have uh, defaults, so that someone is forced to provide the address width and the data width when they instantiate the RAM. So this concept of being able to create one set of code that work can work for a variety of different um, values is uh, is something that's useful for object-oriented programming as well. <coughs> Let's consider. Um, going to look at, for example, uh, cages. So remember in our last example, we had a lion cage, and we were able to put lions into the lion cage, and, the, and that basically we were using a queue as a cage, and we were pop, pushing the lions in the queue and listing through them, and we could even pop them back out if we wanted to. But you know, that's kind of limiting, because that class would only work for lions. What we've done here is we've created a class called animal cage, and we've created a parameter, a type parameter, that says what type of thing gets put in this cage. And so you see here we have type T, and when we declare our variable, the cage, we use the T to say what kind of type this Q is. And then when we make our functions, we again use the T to declare the type of the arguments uh, coming into the, into the uh, functions. So this T gets used all the way throughout here. And as a result, we can do this. We can say, uh, create a lion, and say, put him into uh, an animal cage, parameterized to type lion, and we cage the animal. And we did the same with Simba. But now we can make some chickens. And the chicken here, Clucker, uh, gets put into a chicken cage, which we can see parameterized here. And um, this other one, Scratchy, also gets put into the chicken cage. And then we can call uh, the lion list animals and the chicken list animals, and it lists them out. And one thing you'll notice when you run this code is that because we parameterize these classes, we said animal cage parameterizes lion or animal cage parameterizes chicken, those are, according to System Verilog, completely separate types. They have a different memory space. And so all the chickens go into one memory area, the lions go into a completely different one. That's one way of using static variables um, along with parameterization. But we could also use parameterization if we didn't want to provide static variables. And instead we wanted to have a case where our, um, our cages were instantiated by the user. So here's another way to do the cages. Here we see our animal cage. And uh, again, type T. And again, we've queued it up. We've, we've made a queue of type T. And we made a function of uh, cage animal and a function list animals. But in this case, none of this is static. See here, they're all not static. The, 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 the variable is not, and the functions are not. So we have to declare a variable of type animal cage and instantiate that, that object to use these things. So we look down here, and we create a declaration, and we declare a variable called lion cage, which is of type animal cage parameterized to lion, and another one chicken cage, which is animal cage parameterized to chicken. Now I've got a, got a couple of variables here that can hold these, a couple of handles, and so I create myself a lion cage right here. I make a new lion cage. And then when I take Mustafa, I call lion cage dot cage animal, and that method puts the animal in the cage. Simba, I call lion cage dot cage animal, and puts the lion in the cage. 
And then I make a new cage of a type chicken cage, which we see defined right here. And the chicken cage can take a little red hen and lady clucks a lot. And then when we go down here, we just take those objects and we call uh, list animals on them. And the advantage of doing it this way is we can pass the cage objects around. We could store the cage objects, objects someplace common. We can do a lot of things with these instances of cages versus static cages. And the choice between making a static approach to this problem and this sort of instanced approach is really one of design and the specifics of your situation. But the, the key to takeaway here is that when you're declaring variables uh, that are parameterized, you put the parameter into the declaration and then you can create the variable later on.